want to read uh, one of my letters to the editors here. This is actually from a couple of months ago in July. It's actually a, a, a part of a series of pieces that I've written about what has come to be called free market fundamentalism, uh, which is, of course, uh, the belief that uh, markets are basically God and that we should all worship them by uh, keeping out of their way and making sure that we understand that they are mightily awesome <laughs> and uh, that um, there's really not much we can do about them. However, at the present time, markets are in big trouble. As people may have noticed, there are many people in Washington who are very agitated and concerned and who are talking about giving hundreds of billions of dollars in taxpayer money to some of the biggest and most powerful companies in the whole United States of America and indeed the whole world. And uh, this is just a little commentary on a piece which was originally called Running on Empty and Spreading the Blame. And it actually was about speculation in uh, commodity markets, uh, which of course has actually caused uh, a world food crisis all over the planet and um, has caused governments to fall and people to riot and uh, people to starve to death. So this is just this little piece. The free market fundamentalism that treats markets as if they are God is on prominent display in Henry Lee's Running on Empty and Spreading Flame. Big oil and speculators are just responding to the market and therefore it's just supply and demand that drives prices. This treats both speculators and big oil as if they are not political players. One need look no further than the White House to notice that the energy lobby and speculators have gotten their way, starting with the California energy crisis in the first days of the Bush-Cheney regime, who used none of their unitary executive powers, as Ken Lay's Enron and other Texas Bush buddy companies ripped off little old lady ratepayers for billions. And the ratepayers bit actually comes from the fact that there was, at that time that they finally investigated all of this, that there were actually people who were speculating in these uh, energy markets in California who were making jokes about what was going to happen to little old lady ratepayers when they had to start paying the prices for the energy which they had just gotten in their deals. The energy companies and financial speculators had worked to keep U.S. energy policy based on cheap fossil fuel for decades even though they were non-renewable, hence limited in supply, and caused an ever-growing list of environmental problems. Carter instituted a whole program of alternative energy production and warned that the U.S. was headed for war over oil in 1978. Reagan, with tight ties to big oil and the fi financial forces he deregulated, got rid of Carter's alternative energy program, created SDSUV by exempting light trucks' mileage standards and set the U.S. on course to Gulf Wars 1 and 2. <clears throat> Decades of libertarian econometrics have just created a vast Ponzi scheme in securitized mortgages. Because of it, the U.S. has been in a continuing credit crisis affecting markets everywhere for a year, at least. Speculation in commodity markets has caused an oil and food crisis that has caused demonstrations, riots, failed governments all over the planet. Gasoline prices have been rising since Bush supported the coup attempt in Venezuela and their oligarchy shut down of the refineries there months before the Iraq invasion, which has placed a five-year pressure on oil prices as production there just reached Sodom levels and Iran and the U.S. have been on the brink of war. Markets do not function in a political vacuum. And trade, the most human of given takes, never will be a self-regulating divinity. The world is only flat for international capital. The rest of us look down, up and down the greatest peaks and chasms of inequality ever. For those of us who have been warning about the growing consequences of relying on cheap fossil fuels going back to the early 70s, Mr. Lee's economics are toxic as the big oil industry is to both our society and to our ecology. And, uh, I want to 
finish this up by reading a poem that I wrote probably about 15 years ago because I think it's really important to understand that we are in a real crisis, okay? And it is, in fact, going to be the response of the American people, which is the only thing that can conceivably make any difference in this crisis. And we all just kind of roll over and say, gee, can't it just be like it was in the 90s? It's not going to get us any place because we are in a real crisis. The country is in absolute strategic cul-de-sac in Iraq. Iran is clearly in control of the southern part of that country. They uh, are in control of the last major remaining oil field on the face of the planet. And it is in fact a debilitating war that has gone on for over five and a half years, which has placed them in that position, which has enervated our forces, and which has left us very near to complete and total bankruptcy and almost causing a world recession at the same time. Something is going to change about American life. We can see that already. Anybody who goes to the grocery store knows that prices have gone up tremendously. As we suck wealth out of the country and out of the taxpayers and, and, and continue to pile it up above us, that is only going to get worse. So here's a little piece called Fear Not, For I Am With Thee, which is a quotation from Isaiah. And it's called Once Now. Once there was a hundred year war punctuating the end of a dark age and a black death of plague in the people. Now after two great world wars and half a century of mutually assured destruction, there is another plague. And we tremble at the brush of the rainforest virus. Once kings and queens in their birthing nation states devoured feudal lords and the prince of peace watched the holy empire collapse at his feet. Now the power of imperial nation states fades under the lavishment of the caress of the hands of banks soft shuffling money into credit. Once Science collected in an objective observer creating reality from germs of wisdom reclaimed from a lost past and needles from tradition. Angels danced in multipeds on a pinhead, became men with angels with wings, while demons infested the forest glades and danced devilish revelry under each lone tree with the poor, the female, and the other. Now we rub shoulders with ancient religion and the words and the ways of native peoples. Angels are seen again and the goddess reappears while silence resembles primordial myth. The Pharisees of the current century keep their books in exact the law combined in a movement lost in the fundamentals kicking against the ghost of modernity. The conservatives of legal theft and penalty filled prisons with the addicted victims of internationally productive drug trade and sentence the poor the female and the mental other to the ghettos and the shelters and the streets. Only the names of the usual suspects change. Once a machine made the word interchangeably available to anyone who could decipher print and fossil fuel ripped from the womb of Mama Earth powered an age where imagination became fact. Now the resources so long wasted by armies and navies and air forces, the engines of war, could finally be available to harness the sun with the intangible traces of an electric world. Once there was a great renaissance, a lofty cathedral of art and literature, while the demonized lay in prison, waiting for the confrontation with the malus maleficaris, the Inquisition. Now, whole unemployed classes wait for policy from corporate highs to determine their fates. Well, we, we are waiting for the Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.